pretty much what my life's gonna be like in the lawn for the next month. We get a ton of leaves around here and I'm constantly coming out here to have to clean the leaves off of here. Kind of anal about it. I don't really like to leave them on there. Sometimes I mulch, sometimes a bag, but I got two giant trees around me that have got to have their leaves cleaned up. So this is the renovation. The renovation results, I think they're great. Let's talk about today. Some lessons I learned, the good, the bad, and uh, things I would change after doing my first one. And hopefully by the end of this, either you'll have the confidence to do it yourself. Maybe we can have a discussion about some problems you've been having in the comments. First of all, if you're new to the channel, I want to say welcome and I'm glad you're here. I did a complete glyphosate kill off renovation of my lawn this year in the fall and so what you see behind me is planted fresh as of this fall I have some other videos on the channel about the renovation and how we got to this point so make sure you check those out also did a video about why I decided to kill my lawn so if that's something you've kind of been on the fence about maybe you can check that out and get some ideas just to level set what we've got here is GCI turf type tall fescue blend and that is uh, three different cultivars of turf type tall fescue there's no Kentucky bluegrass in here this is just straight up turf type tall fescue and as far as the fertilization goes that's kind of one of the first things that I guess we can talk about my approach to fertilizing this changed in the middle of the renovation I had the intentions of just completely following the next overseeding and seeding pack when it comes to that first dose of fertilizer I really don't think it's necessary to apply fertilizer at the time of seeding the one thing that I did apply at the time of seeding that I'm very happy uh, with the performance of and the results of was mesotrione generic version of tenacity I think I can count on my hands how many weeds actually popped up in this lawn and around the Edges, we do have some breakthrough of some less desirable grasses you can see this lime green kind of border this is right against the road and obviously I didn't put any pre-emergent down this fall and so I've got some breakthrough of some undesired plants in here I'm not really sure what they are I haven't ID'd them yet some of it has some seed heads uh, this fall that look very much like poa it's really hard to keep the turf perfect uh, right against the edge of the road here because stuff blows down the street gets washed down the street stuff happens So we'll have to deal with that. There's not a lot of dandelion chickweed not a lot of wild violet Look at all this stuff chickweed and wild violet galore So I think that tenacity did really well in making sure that we didn't have any Breakthrough of that stuff that I've traditionally really fought with in my lawn My focus this fall was growing this grass in and trying to make it as healthy as it could be I'll address the weeds later. Now there's nothing wrong with the next seeding and overseeding pack. The products that are in there are fine, but when it came to the application frequency, I just don't think I agree with what's outlined in their guide. I mean, you can still use them on your lawn if you want, but I would suggest making your own set schedule, understanding when and why you should apply your different fertilizers. The fact of the matter is you can throw grass seed on the dirt and properly water it, get it to germinate without applying any fertilizer. And in fact, I really don't feel like an initial fertilizer application when you apply your seed is really required. I'd rather apply that fertilizer, maybe a starter fertilizer, maybe after the first mow or a few weeks after the seed has sprouted so that it really has a chance to utilize the fertilizer that you're putting into the soil. I ended up making the first application per the next seeding and overseeding guide and that left me with like half a gallon of the green pop left, but I hit that again a week and a half or two weeks after that once the grass had actually come up ahead of schedule and I've stayed ahead of that schedule and went my own way with fertilization. One thing that I also looked into this fall was uh, growth potential and trying to understand some of the new studies that have come out around fertilizer utilization by your grass as per weather conditions really and your soil temperatures when it comes down to it. Even this whole kind of like fall nitrogen blitz thing is not really rooted in that and people's understanding of how grass utilizes fertilizer in the fall has changed over time. I'll leave a resource in the description of this video that will give you a better understanding and a guide to calculating the growth potential of your turf and matching that up to fertilizer inputs. In other words, if your grass really isn't growing or it's not really been shown to be taking up a lot of fertilizer at the time, there's no point in putting a ton of it into the soil and risking it leaching out of the soil or just plain old being a waste of money. So on top of the next seeding and overseeding pack, one thing that I've been seeing great results from in my lawn is ammonium sulfate. I've been using that primarily after I finished up the next seeding and overseeding pack 
to take care of the fertilization of the lawn and one thing that has been undeniable is the color response that you can get out of that stuff. I have seen the lawn turn a really deep dark forest kind of green that I have not been able to get out of my lawn from other fertilizer products and so it's something that I'll definitely be incorporating into my program and probably be a main staple for my nitrogen source going forward. So after I did some research and plugged in really my own numbers to look at the growth potential of my turf, the data says that really my nitrogen input should have been a lot higher in September and if I would have followed the next seeding and overseeding pack it just would not have been enough nitrogen to satisfy what I think the lawn needed and also what a lot of the data tells us about growth potential of turf. So I've been tapering off my nitrogen inputs into October here. Actually it's November 2nd as I'm filming this and uh, through October I really tapered off, decreased the amount of nitrogen that I was putting into the lawn, but I kept the frequencies weekly or bi-weekly depending on my schedule and just life in general. The results speak for themselves. I really don't feel like this concept of, you know, like throwing down a pound of nitrogen every week or whatever to fix your lawn is a lot better. And I definitely agree with a lot of the comments that have been said online regarding spending more time and effort in introducing better cultivars and better performing turf into your lawn over just throwing a bunch of product at it, think you can get a better long-term result and it's more worth your money. On top of the nitrogen inputs, another thing that I've been making sure to keep going in my lawn program has been humic acid and kelp. I really think that those are great inputs into the lawn for introducing more carbon into the lawn, just stimulate the microbial life, and of course uh, root mass development. And that's something that of course we're focused on after our renovation is building up that root mass of the new turf. Watering was something too that uh, you, I just had to keep an eye on as I went throughout the process. At one point I actually did increase my watering and discovered that my sprinkler coverage wasn't as good as I thought it was and so I had to augment with some hand watering here and there. Just gonna have to get out there and see with your sprinkler system, you know, are you keeping the seed moist enough to germinate? It's something that really, you know, us people online, we can't really tell everybody else, oh, you have to do it by this amount of time. Everybody's sprinkler setup is different water pressure is different, nozzles are different, square footage and coverage of a given zone is different. So you really just have to get out there and keep an eye on your watering and that was one thing that I felt like I had to change and increase uh, as I started to get some germination. And on that topic of watering I did decide to retire auto for the end of the year here as I've been growing in this renovation. I showed you guys the sprinkler setup that the Melnor company sent me and it has been fantastic as far as coverage goes. I'd really recommend that kit to anybody who's looking for something that's very gentle to water specific sections of their lawn. I think Otto uh, taking him out of the picture for a little bit because of how aggressive the water droplets are was the right move and helped to make sure that that seed stayed in place. The first mow probably could have waited a little longer. I'm cutting this around two and a half inches now and have been maintaining it there since the grass has really come up. I think I could have waited on that first mow to let it grow up a little bit more and get taller, maybe around the four inch mark before I mowed that. But I don't think I did any damage in mowing it as soon as I did. One interesting point that I wanted to bring up was around uh, using old seed. So I actually purchased this seed at the beginning of last year and I wasn't really sure how the germination rates were going to be. It's been kept dry and it's been inside of my garage but it wasn't airtight. It was shielded from the elements but it just being a little bit older of a seed I, I wasn't really sure if I was going to see any germination rate problems but everything came in really well and so I would definitely say as long as you keep your seed in good condition a year for sure is no problem in terms of keeping it stored properly and then growing it the following year. I did use that peat moss roller which put down a nice even layer but there were some spots I felt like maybe I could have done a second pass. Let's talk about some of the trouble areas that have come out of this renovation. In my front yard, I have this, uh, this drainage ditch that runs down the front of my yard. And so I was worried that with the slope here that I might have some issues with keeping the seed in place. But I actually think the issues that I have are caused by the water running off the face of the ditch. Right here in front of the mailbox, the seed, uh, it came in and germinated and sprouted, but I think it died off. 
I think this is due to sprinkler coverage that it just wasn't getting an adequate amount of water to sustain itself and I think the water that made it here probably had some runoff issues because of how steep this is this is kind of steeper than the rest of the ditch here that was part of the problem and I probably would have been better off doing more spot watering out here to get this stuff to grow in and really establish itself. But this will be something again that I'll address either in the spring or next fall. Also right along my domination line I had some issues. Again I think it's sprinkler coverage that's not throwing out here towards the road hard enough. Right there underneath those leaves. Grass didn't really come in that well. And so again, that'll just be something that I'll have to spot repair. And there's one other interesting spot that I want to show you. And I want to challenge people in the comments if they think they can figure out why I have this spot. So the spot is right there. Any guesses? You notice what else is right up there? gutter so that gutter got clogged at one point and water was flowing over the edge of the gutter and hitting and eroding the turf right outside of it and so it actually wore away this kind of spot suffered the consequences and paid the price one of the big things that i've put into practice uh, this fall has been nitrogen management and so if you guys are interested in maybe a video that talks about that or a podcast style video might be something that we can cover nothing ever comes in perfect but i I'm really happy with the results that I got here. So if this is something that you're looking to tackle, something that you would like some confidence in uh, knowing that you can do it too. I would encourage you to check out some of my other videos and see the way that I did it. And I wanna thank everybody who has checked out my channel and um, subscribed this season. I've seen a lot of great growth this season and I wanna say thank you to everybody who watches my videos. If there's any dying topics that you would like covered, please let me know down in the comments and I'd love to throw together a video for you guys. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace.